gentlemen and welcome back to SF Live. I'm your host, Myrna Lim. Tonight we have a very special show. It concerns an issue that affects a lot of people, young people, old people, students, college graduates, students who did not finish college, and so on and so forth. In this economy, everybody is struggling for that mighty dollar. And unfortunately, we have this looming crisis in the horizon that, unfortunately, our government, our political leaders, have not addressed to date. We are talking about a trillion dollar, maybe, trillion dollar problem facing America today, student loans. And here we have a documentary and the filmmakers of the film, Default. I'm disabled. I'm moving with my mother. I have no income. If it weren't for my mother right now, Sally Mae would be calling me in a cardboard box on a street in San Francisco. And I still think if that were the case, Sally Mae would still want their money. It's a bottomless hole. You could throw $100 bills down this bottomless hole for the rest of your life, and it'll never fill up. And it appears to be completely designed that way. No other generation has had to face $20,000 in student loan debt out of the gate. Graduate students facing $42,000 out of the gate. Corporate irresponsibility is far more to blame than personal irresponsibility on this issue. Per year, I borrow about $25,000. Uh, well, I'm only a freshman, so I've only borrowed once, and I borrowed $10,000, which isn't that much for actually the school. A lot of people borrow between about ten and 25000 That's per year. Yeah, per year. I don't know a lot about how much I owe or what. Like, I know I pay, like, a little bit every month, and but, I, like, I'm terrible at keeping up on how much that is because, to me, it's really overwhelming. For federally guaranteed student loans, the Truth in Lending Act doesn't apply. So typically, the students upon graduation can't even tell you what their interest rates are, whether their loans are federally guaranteed or not, or often who their lender is, believe it or not. The Citibank Student Loan Corporation would send me these notices and they'd say, this is just to notify you of your interest rates. And then they started sending me one saying, this is just to notify you of a change in your interest rates. And it was like, it was like watching the odometer on a car. I remember thinking, what happened to the 9%? Where did the 17% come from? And seeing the number, uh, something like 900 something dollars a month for my private student loan, and immediately realizing that was more than I make in a month. Student loans barely existed 30, 40 years ago. And today, as a nation, we owe something like $600 billion in student loan debt. And uh, I think that we have, have to ask ourselves as a nation at this point, how could we have let this happen? The original loan amount was $45,974. And this last statement I received on December 16th, 2007, indicates that the outstanding balance is $73,789. So it has accrued uh, just shy of $30,000 in interest. If you look at it in the roundhouse figure, say, okay, it was $30,000 to go to UNR for three years. They now say that I owe about $90,000, so it's tripled. They can seize Social Security, they can seize tax refunds, they can garnish your wages. Like if I get hit crossing the street by a bus and I end up in a wheelchair, they can seize my disability. I would say to the graduating class of 2008 to be very, very careful in deciding where to go to school and deciding how to borrow the money. And I would encourage them to be very careful about how involved they get their parents and to consider what would happen if their parents co-sign on these loans and they don't graduate, they don't finish their education, or they do finish their education and they default on their loans. We have to have doctors, we have to have lawyers, we have to have 
microbiologists, and we have to have newspaper reporters and public school teachers and professional photographers and all of that. And those are all jobs that, those are all careers that require a significant amount of education. Um, we're just going to get stupider <laughs> until there's a change. <laughs> we're just going to get dumber. Well, welcome. So how did you guys come up with this idea? You, let me guess, you owe student loans. <laughs> <laughs> I have student loans, and uh, what happened is that um, when I graduated and I started receiving the first notices of payment, I, um, I noticed that there was some disconnect from what the financial aid office had explained to me at my school and what the reality was. Wow. And this was a few years ago, and at the time, um, I started doing some research on how the student loans really worked, and it was really, really hard to get any sort of um, information or advice except for student loans are great for you. Right. And I was thinking, this don't look so great to me, you know, what's going on? So right. Um, I talked to Serge about this and you know he said wow that's crazy it's taking you you know six months seven months a year to find out about what you signed um, we should make a movie about it and wow. I have to tell you my first reaction was kind of like <laughs> this is gonna be boring lots of interest <laughs> rates you know and that kind of stuff but yeah. then the more we talked about it the more we were like yeah this is pretty crazy and you know it's not heading in the right direction so well, I mean, especially with the compounding effect. I mean, that woman was just talking about uh, her student la loans went up by, what, two-thirds? Yeah. And, 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 and how long did that take before that compound? They tripled through years. Yeah. That's incredible. So have you, have you shown this film? Has it hit the market yet? So since, um, so late October actually was released on PBS. So PBS stations all around the country have been airing it. It's great. And, uh, and actually, we've been screening it on uh, college campuses and conferences for the past year, year and a half. I think wow. we've had over 150 screenings. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the, the thing about student loans is, um, you know, a lot, we, we kind of laugh about this, but we say, yeah, I'm going to finally stick it to the government. I'll be dead by the time they catch up with me on the student loans. But it, it's a major problem. Uh, because there's different kinds, right? I mean, there's the uh, the kind of loans that are backed by the U.S. government, and then there's the independent ones, Salome, and so forth. And those people are sharks, aren't they? Yeah. More, more than the economic problem, it's really um, it's sort of the toll it takes right. on the individual. And that's right. something that you know we really we discovered in, in the four or five years that we were filming this is that it, it takes the human consequences of this. And from day one, we, w we wanted to right. make sure that we presented a human face of the issue. Right. Because, you know, after all the numbers and the figures and the legislation, it really comes down to, you know, individual Americans not making choices, not, not starting families, right. not going into the professions they want to go into, right. not going into s business for themselves because they have this unmanageable debt that they have to deal with. Right. And you got to get rid of it. You, you cannot... You can declare bankruptcy. You cannot get rid of it through bankruptcy. You cannot modify it. You cannot. What can people do? Well, there are some, um, you know, some really, really, really difficult ways to discharge your loans yeah. depending on the type of loan you have, right. and you know, you should see a lawyer if you right. have any student loan problems. But in general, you know, in most cases, you're correct. It, it's not dischargeable. Right. And, um, you know, the federal government and the private lenders, they have different types of powers, but they have a lot of power to come after you and collect right. on these loans. Um, and, and it's something we touch on right. the, 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 the bigger version of the film is that you, know, you can discharge your, your gambling debts in bankruptcy. Gambling you, debts, but not your student loan debt. So why do you know really you can discharge? I don't <laughs> gamble, so that's news to me. Wow. But, but but that's actually very telling of the power yeah, of exactly. the student lending industry in in Washington today. But there aren't they the regular banks though? I mean, who have issued a lot of the student loans? 
outside um, of the ones that are uh, guaranteed by the U.S. government? There's there's regular banks that right. issue um, private student loans, and there's also student loan lenders right. like Sally Mae, you know, where right. they're not a bank, but right. they give us student loans. So there's different entities. Now, I, I saw online um, there's a petition. Uh, I don't remember who uh, the organization was. There's a petition to get Congress to pass a bill to make it possible to discharge student loans. Are you familiar with that kind of? Yeah. Seems to be like a movement almost. There are different um, right. petitions going on right now. Basically, like they're just asking for the same right. bankruptcy protection that right. you have for any other type of loans, like right. credit card debt, you know, business loans, right. uh, gambling debt, you know, any other. Um, for some reason, student loans have been taken out of right. those protections, so they are in their own category. And um, for private student loans, that only happened in two thousand and five, so right. it's very recent. Um, so what? petitioners of what the movement is asking to have the same kind of bankruptcy protection that right. you have for any other type of loans for student loans and um, I think a lot of people when they hear about this you know they imagine all the students that will go and declare bankruptcy and you know you that's not really it, right. that's not really the point like yeah. I think most people don't want to go bankrupt but the bankruptcy protection gives an incentive to the lender to negotiate with the borrower right. And the way it is right now, they can keep piling fees and fees after exactly. fee and keep going after you for it. So there's no real way for a borrower to negotiate better terms right. or stop the fees from accruing and so on. So it's kind of a way also to protect, right. you know, right. people. Yeah, I mean, I have friends who uh, went to law school and uh, there's a friend of mine and she owes a quarter of a million dollars on... Um, her law school um, loans. Well, unfortunately, she hasn't passed the bar. <laughs> so, luckily for her, she's married to a dentist who's been paying this. But I mean, you know, what are the what are the choices? Not very many people can afford to get married to somebody who's willing to pay for their student loans. And if you're not able to get into the profession that you where you accumulated this loan, what are the options? Well, I mean, it's really interesting you bring up law students, is because right. we're seeing. Among, among law students and medical students, right. actually, we're seeing uh, a trend of the type of specialties they're going into, right. those decisions being made because of their loans. Um, you're, you know, why would someone go be a public defender, for example, make, right. make such a low wage when they right. have over $100,000 in debt? We're also right. seeing in the medical profession where right. there's a real shortage today of family practitioners. Right. Because family practitioners don't pay as much as, say, selective surgery or uh, other right. type of specialties. And, and there is a crisis, and again, you can tie all that to to the loans, to the right. debt that these students. And again, the average, you know, today, um, two thirds, I believe, two thirds of graduates right. come out with an average of twenty five thousand dollars in debt. But if you go to graduate school, if you go to medical and law school, right. you're you're looking at over a hundred thousand dollars. That's incredible. And especially those fields right now. I mean, more so for law students. Um, as a matter of fact, we're seeing a lot of law students suing their former law schools. There's a class action suit right now where they named, I think, about 15 schools suing them, saying, well, you misrepresented the employment picture for us, and that's why we went to this particular law school. And for physicians, for doctors, uh, if they're serving poor people, Medi-Cal, Medicare patients, the government keeps on cutting those provider fees, so they're having a hard time as well. So either way, it hits a lot of people. And then for the average uh, student who what, got a BA or BS, and, and, and uh, what jobs are there? And then you're stuck with this loans. And if you don't pay, it has a cumulative compounding effect, right? It's, it's, it's also the, the larger question of you know, the cost of higher education. I mean, one of the things we, you know, right. we try to do when we travel the country and, and to make this documentary is, you know, why does college have to cost what it does today. Exactly. And we're seeing we're, te we're seeing tuition hikes at every corner, every oh opportunity. Oh that's a big fight right now, right? And, and we're seeing federal aid being cut right. as well. And so that l unfortunately leaves the gap for for b students having to borrow money. And exactly. more and more having to borrow from private lenders. Right. Which again, no consumer protections, no cap on fees, and just... I want to give a couple of resources to the viewers out there. Right, sure. Um, 
there's a government program called IBR, Income Based Repayment. Right. And if you only have federal loans, um, or right. if your federal loans are separate from your private student loans, that can be a really useful tool. Right. They cap your payment to a percentage of your income. Usually right. it's 10% of your gross um, income. Right. You know, it's, uh, it's not, it doesn't solve everybody's problem, but it helps certain people, certain borrowers. Right. So it's definitely something to look at. It's IBR, income-based right. repayment. Now, does that affect private loans? Not private at all. Loans? Yeah. And they don't take it in consideration, so it helps some people. Right. You know, but I would invite everybody to check if they qualify and they can right. get on this program. And then um, there's student loan borrowers assistance.org. Uh -huh. That's a great resource for everything legal right. um, about student loans. Um, and they have, um, you know, much better answers to very detailed legal questions right. that we as filmmakers <laughs> right. couldn't. Um, now, with, with as you go around the country, what are politicians doing about this problem? Well, well I mean, one of the things we're excited about is compared to when we started, when we right. first started the project, there was literally no awareness on the issue. There was very little attention being given. Oh, to I'm gonna this put this on my Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's one of the things we're really seeing the last yeah. last year, year exactly. and a half, where uh, politicians are starting to talk about it. Right. There's, you know, the growing Occupy movement, for example, is really oh, yeah, championed okay. the, um, you know, student debt as one of their key issues. And this year, especially with an election year, more and more okay. legislators and uh, you know activists are coming out and talking about the issue. But they have to do it on a federal level, though, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, u ultimately, you know, I mean, there's many little fixes like right. IBR. There's there's things like that, but ultimately, it has to be, right. you know, the federal government needs to step in and, and and make some decisions. Is there like a congressman, woman who champions the issue? Has somebody well, picked it up? Well, uh, well there is a uh, congressman Hanson Clark from Michigan, I believe, mm -hmm. right from Detroit. Uh -huh. Michigan, yes, yeah. um, is a big sort of proponent of of this issue. And he's working on something, but um, that's all yeah. we can say right now. Oh, <laughs> they're authoring uh, a bill? Well, he, he spoke out um, oh, you know, publicly about student yeah. loans and the need to really um, do something about it. Right, so. right. Well, we'll help elect him. <laughs> <laughs> if he had if he had started talking about it earlier, he would be the president. He would be running for president now, right? No, it, it's a big deal. It's a really serious problem today. I mean, it's amazing. I have friends who are working as lawyers, but it's like um, they pay a thousand a month at least. Could you imagine that? Yeah. I mean, even you know, for an entry level or mid level lawyer job, even I mean, a thousand dollars is a lot of money yeah. to pay. You know. I mean, he still yeah. drives a be old, beat-up car and, <laughs> and so yeah. forth. Absolutely. And that's stuck with them, right, too. I mean, uh, how with the compounding interest, once you start paying the loan, the balance keeps on multiplying, right? Well, so one thing we show in the movie is, right. you know, how if you go into default, they right. add, um, you know, 20% of your principal directly to your student loan balance and then capitalize that and start charging more interest oh on the geez. bigger balance. But also when you put your um, loans in forbearance or deferment, which are totally legal ways to say, yeah. you know, I'm not making enough money, I'm unemployed, I can't right, make these right. payments, they keep charging interest. And at the end of the forbearance or the deferment, that interest is capitalized and wow. becomes principal again. Right, right. So a lot of time, you know, especially like, when we show this movie, especially the first, uh, you know, the beginning of when we were showing the movie, we always heard this question, like, but people borrow this, shouldn't they pay this back? And we always yeah. said, yes, they should pay back what they borrowed. However... Well, how about Donald Trump? I mean, how many <laughs> times has the guy declared bankruptcy? Yes, that's true. But He's not sweating it, huh? Yeah. He's not having a hard time. But a lot of the borrowers we talked to, they had already paid, you know, a big chunk. Exactly. And they owed more than what they borrowed. So because of the interest, sometimes you might end up paying two, three, five, six times what you borrowed. Right, right. So it becomes a totally different issue. Okay, now let's talk about you personally because this is fascinating. How did you guys end up doing this? Now, you used to work for the United Nations, right, Sergey? At, at the FAO of the United Nations, and then you work in Greenpeace International, and you came from Lebanon, moved to LA, and then here you are in San Francisco. You have a BS in biochemistry, so how did you end up becoming a filmmaker? Fascinating. And you are the producer and writer, and both of you did. So. Let's talk about you personally. 
how did you end up talking about this besides the fact that you woke up one day and thought, oh my God, I have this incredible student loan. How am I going to pay for this? Um, I, was, um, I was actually quite fortunate. I received a um, you know, scholarship to go to oh, school. Oh yeah, you're the smart otherwise, ones. Well, I mean, <laughs> otherwise, you know, I was, right. very, I was very lucky. Otherwise, my parents would have never been able to afford to, to send me to the okay. schools they did. Uh, but I mean, for me personally, just education and, and social justice is something very important. Exactly. And um, you know, I've, you know, I really believe that film, especially if it's well done, I'd like to think we did a. Good it's job. a good job. You did a good it's, job. It's, it's a it's a way to actually reach out to a much broader audience. Yeah. Right. So. How about you, Aurora? You're a lo your business is locally grown weddings. Okay, how did you end up becoming a filmmaker? Yeah, um, well, I study filmmaking and photography, and so I'm a photographer, full-time photographer now, and I always wanted to make movies, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's been my biggest passion. So I feel like people learn from other people, you know, and like the arts is right. where we connect with people different from us, and we learn about topics, and right. so... It seems, I don't know, I, I've been so happy that documentary films now are so popular. You know, when oh, I yeah. went to film school, they were not, it was yeah, like the least thing. <laughs> people thought they were boring, right? <laughs> right. And so it's so are you a, a local job. wedding planner? Is that what your business is? No, no, no I'm a photographer. Oh, okay. But, um, so I have my business. And then Locally Grown Weddings is um, a business I have with a group of people. And we do weddings from beginning to end. So we do plan weddings and do catering and flowers and everything. Okay, 22 minutes. Two minutes go so fast. We only have a few seconds. Website. What's your website so people can contact you? It's uh, www.defaultmovie.com. And Great. we also have a Facebook page, which is very active. So I encourage people to go to the Facebook okay, page. Okay, excellent. Well, congratulations. Well done. It's an excellent, excellent program. And uh, make sure, oh, I'll be befriend you guys so I can post this on YouTube. It's Great. excellent. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you so much for joining us tonight, and um, we'll see you again next time. Good night.